Hi, everybody, and happy Trinity Sunday. It's Brother Peter. I'm here with the Gospel Reflection. Uh, talking about the Trinity is a kind of a daunting uh, prospect for preachers, so I want, want to relax you in saying that I have no uh, plans for explaining the Trinity, <laughs> uh, you know, expounding on all of my deep theological knowledge of the Trinity. Um, to me, uh, if, you, if you know me well, the Trinity for me is um, basil, tomato, and garlic. So <laughs> I, that's a little above my pay grade. So I hope you went to a really great um, church this Sunday where a really very uh, deeply read pastor with, um, you know, profound knowledge of the nature of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, gave you a wonderful sermon so that you're now deeply versed in uh, the reality, the Trinitarian reality. Maybe you can teach me a little bit about it sometime. Anyhow, I do want to talk about the gospel, however. So today's gospel is taken from Matthew. In fact, it's, it's the last uh, few uh, Paragraph. It's the last paragraphs in Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So, you know that in Scripture, if um, things are happening on top of a mountain, you know that something exciting is going to happen because mountains, uh, you know, in the ancient world, mountains uh, were, the symbol of a mountain indicates like a greater proximity to the divine. Just as even today we experience that greater, um, you know, heightened uh, spiritual charge from being in high places. Even if you're not a mountain climber, if you've ever been to, the Grand Canyon, or maybe you've in a large city, you've been on top of a tall building. When you're able to see this distance in front of you and you experience something really vast, or you look out the window of an airplane, um, it's a different perspective and it's uh, a heightened uh, awareness of how vast um, our surroundings are. Um, so, so anyhow, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, there's, there are several scenes that take place having to do with mountains, and a, f a few of them are the temptation of Jesus happens on a mountain, on a mountaintop. The Sermon on the Mount takes place on the mountain. The mountain where Jesus sought solitude is another one. The transfiguration occurs on a mountain. And the Temple Mount, where the events of the Passion took place, is also a mountaintop. Uh, and today's reading is referred to as the Great Commission that also takes place, and it's the last mountaintop um, experience in Matthew. So when we read in scripture that something takes place on a mountain, we're being made aware that whatever is happening is especially sacred, is taking place in closer proximity to the divine. We all have places where we go to seek greater contact with the divine, with God. Yours might not occur on a mountain, and truth be told, uh, nor for many of us is it in church. It might take place at yoga class, in a dance studio, at the gym, in a place where elder pe elderly people are cared for, where the poor are fed, maybe in a garden, a field, a beach, or somewhere else in nature or the wilderness. In a school, in a place where you are surrounded by family, where you are alone, in an art museum or studio, at a baseball game or other sporting event, in the presence of animals, in the kitchen. There are probably as many places for seeking divine contact as there are seekers. 
For most of us, these places of inspiration change during our lifetime. Many are blessed to experience this contact in a variety of places. And if we're very centered and awake, we might be capable of experiencing God's presence any and everywhere. That is a gift and a blessing. Matthew's objective is to present Jesus as the new Moses. So in closing his gospel with the Great Commission in his final lines, which we're reading today, he's leaving us with the image of Jesus on the mountain, just if we, as we have read about Moses on the mountain. As you move through the week, be aware of the sacred presence around you. Go out of your way to return to a sacred place you haven't re revisited in a while, or better yet, challenge yourself to encounter the divine in undiscovered territory. Give yourself permission to start over, to let the past go and begin anew. The spiritual life shouldn't be a drag. It's a great voyage. Enjoy the adventure. As I write this reflection, I'm aware that some of the greatest atrocities and barbaric tortures in human history are being visited on the people of Palestine tonight in a continued barbaric genocide. I'm praying for peace, but also praying for justice and liberation, without which peace will never be possible. Please challenge yourself to work for liberation, peace, and justice this week, if only in the smallest ways. Do what you can within your abilities and limitations. Remember what St. Francis often told his followers, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's impossible, then do what's possible, and suddenly you'll be doing the impossible. God bless you everyone and have a great week.